There are two very different stories to tell in 2020. This is the most uneven economy ever. It's the Roaring Twenties and the Great Depression rolled into one, and that's a very dangerous thing. Ask a stock market speculator how business has been since March 2020. They're a genius, right? Everything is up. Tesla, Amazon, Apple, PE ratios? I don't know what that is, and I don't care. Bye, bye, bye. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. A little bit of humor to start the video. We're going to talk about the K-shaped recovery. That is, some are doing well, some are not at all. And we are going to look at what is important, because I'm going to show you how many people are struggling, and at the same time, how many people are doing fantastic. And that really comes in two very different ways. I have been highlighting this all along, all throughout 2020, and of course before that, but it has never been worse in history as far as I'm aware. The chasm in between the haves and the have-nots grows every single day. And because so many people are overextending themselves today, this could very well present itself as an even bigger problem at some point down the road. I wanted to start the video off with this article here. Number one, big business, investors, and the wealthy are thriving, but restaurants and bar employees, hotel and airline staff, and other service workers are in a pretty hopeless situation right now. A depression is an apt description of what they're facing, especially folks in rural and middle America who are parents. 700,000 Americans have been filing unemployment insurance claims every week for 37 weeks. That's nine months plus 20 million people are still on the unemployment rolls. That's unheard of, incredibly bad. Now, I just wanted to touch on something. I saw a video, really quick video today, of a lady whose restaurant was shut down and basically with all the lockdowns and everything, they can't survive, she said. Her workers won't be able to survive. And what happened just around the corner from her, there's a Hollywood set that they set up outdoor dining tents, and that is allowed to operate. And this is the problem that we have. We have a situation in which there are winners and losers, and the government is deciding who are the winners and who are the losers. And some people would say, well, this is the problem. We have the wrong government in place. If we just put this government in place, then everything's going to be okay. But you don't understand how the government works. The government is rotten from the core. If the core is rotten, you shouldn't be eating the fruit. Okay, now this is the way that I look at it. And if you see see it, you know, when you give control to the top, of course, it's going to find its way down. It is never a good thing. Anyway, no more ranting. As Axios has been telling you government statistics because of the way that they've always been reported under state lots of red flags, the official unemployment rate has been dropping, but that's because it never really counted gig economy workers well in the first place. Its data collection abilities have been severely crimped by what we're seeing today in 2020. This crisis and lots of people are falling out of the labor force not working and not looking all right all of these things i'm surprised seeing it in the mainstream but here it is i mean it's obvious i've covered it numerous occasions but it's actually here in black and white what's next 13 million people are on unemployment programs that expire at the end of the year 27 days from now so they're suggesting that they're going to create a new stimulus package and so on it's going to be less than a trillion can you believe that i mean wow wow less than one trillion i mean what is the effect of that is there even a value in less than one trillion i mean you printed up so many trillion already why not just throw 50 trillion in there throw 100 trillion get the economy booming and we'll see what happens to the currency we'll talk more about the dollar in a moment food banks food pantries there are some serious issues happening and this is one key indicator that i have been following because it's everywhere no matter where we look it could be in california could be in texas could be in new york all the same thing i know people will say that oh well they're just trying to get some free food and so on and they have nice cars and i get that i do get that but there's no question about it the amount of people using these services 
has increased significantly. Sometimes you see threefold, sometimes you see fivefold, tenfold. It all depends. This one here happens to be Texas. The need for money to stock Collin County food pantries has reached a crisis level. Last year, they were supplying about 4,500 pounds of food a month. November 2020, they provided. I, I mean, just look at the difference, 130,000 pounds. So they went from 4,500 to 130,000 pounds. Absolutely unbelievable. And this is coming at such an unfortunate time where this is the holiday season for, for many people. And it is just really, really, truly unfortunate in so many ways when you have individuals and corporations like apple that are seeing so much money flowing into it and then you have the exact opposite coming for millions of people and what is the solution let's create a stimulus package to give people a few hundred bucks a month that doesn't fix the problem this is a serious issue that unfortunately will not be resolved by government I believe it was two videos ago I talked about what's going on with the of course the pensions and what we are seeing with individuals their retirement accounts their social security all of these different things that come in line with the way that money is managed and they are always trying to achieve higher standards than what they can actually do so what I mean by that is they'll promise a 7% gain per year and this is how they, they show you on the little nice little chart okay we're gonna get seven the stock market over the past hundred years has gained seven percent per year now that actual calculation when you look at it is incorrect if you actually sat down and calculated it it is incorrect because they're not factoring in when the drop happens where exactly are you buying in or are you holding the money that you had previously they actually do it wrong on purpose to make it look better to make that return on investment better i mean it's a business that's the way it works but also student debt and other forms of debt are something that really should be factored in here when i look at this i see an extreme scenario there's no doubt, but it is for many people in sort of the same boat. Student loan horror stories borrowed $79,000, paid $190,000, now owes $236,000. At 59, Chris pleaded for a renegotiation, quote, my life expectancy is 15 more years. At this rate, you're not going to get very much. Their response was, so this is how it works they take every dime you've got it's not the student that that's the problem it's the system of debt and if we try to just put our uh let's say our view or our focus onto one specific thing saying okay well this is the problem if they simply did this this company this bank who i took out the debt from or the government this needs to be resolved and they will actually come to a conclusion somehow that getting rid of that debt or canceling it or maybe not having it in the first place free for everybody is going to resolve the problem but if we only understood the central banking system and how the fractional reserve banking and how everything works around this we would come to a very different conclusion quick update here on the amount of debt that we're seeing with student loans it is just about to cross 1.7 trillion dollars look at that line it is straight 45 degree angle right here unbelievable to see how much growth not good growth of course and then we're looking at motor vehicle loans owned and securitized that yellowish area on the right hand side there is 2020 essentially and you could see how it has spiked up and there's no doubt about a 1.2 trillion dollars there it will continue to go higher as well why not just push it off into the future make that debt grow as much as you possibly can and everything's gonna work out right 
When you expand the debt, when you create all of these different schemes in order to boost asset prices, that's what it's all about, to sucker more people in, you end up with the unintended consequences. And in this case here, we are seeing the value of the US dollar declining significantly over the last couple of years. I've been covering that in the past few videos. But as a result, other currencies, as we've talked about, have performed better in relation, not in relation to real goods, because just about everywhere people are paying more for everything than they did last year five years ago ten years ago and so on that's how you measure it but take a look at this the canadian dollar rose to its strongest level in more than two years friday after better than, than expected domestic job numbers that contrasted with a disappointing u.s labor market report now that to me is completely insignificant it's all based on what's happening with the u.s dollar but what is interesting is that the currency outperformed its group of 10 peers as weak U.S. payroll data fueled hopes for additional fiscal stimulus, dragging the greenback lower. So the Canadian dollar, after being pushed down, has now risen up somewhat. It's at 1.278 for, uh, for every dollar and the strongest level since May 2018. So watch what happens here as you see the currency moving. If you looked at what occurred during the financial crisis it's not on this chart here but it was significant if i'm not mistaken it was something like uh, one canadian dollar was 114 so it it was a complete opposite of what we're seeing today i don't know if it's going to hit that level but it is um, quite amazing to see how much the actual currency value can move and that gives people an opportunity dollar debasement as us devalues to finance deficit a couple points i wanted to make here this is the treasury gross issuance and look at this so on the right hand side you're seeing 2021 look at what happened during the financial crisis you can see right here that there is let me get the highlighter up that there is this huge spike okay during the financial crisis did it ever come down after that spike of course not. No, it didn't. So you can see it's basically at this level and then starts to increase after that a few years later. But if we can expect the same situation, imagine now we are going, by the way, that is where they predict approximately, it's hard to tell in the chart, but somewhere around $4.5 trillion. Imagine that they are simply devaluing this currency intentionally to finance their deficit. The national debt keeps growing. The deficits are getting bigger and bigger. The debt is expanding in every way. Corporate debt is expanding and personal debts and every type of debt is going off the charts. And in order to make this actually, I don't want to say possible to pay back, but because at this point it is mathematically impossible but the way that you could is simply to devalue the currency to the point of confetti and then anything is easy to pay back what i've seen in previous cases uh, we have examples of this where the devaluation is so bad that they actually start to peg it to the inflation rate so it's not as if it's 5 10 20 percent inflation where you know the bank basically gets paid back less as a result or whoever the lender is is just going to get less out of it in the end no no they actually peg it to the inflation rate and that would in effect uh, create a problem for the holder of that because chances are they're dealing with other things at the time if there's uh, too much inflation they're going to be dealing with some issues there's no doubt about it ask anybody from a developing nation that's dealing with uh, different problems in their own society and, and the things that they have to deal with the financial system becomes corrupt and you got nothing but problems really quickly want to move through this here i know i've been ranting uh, but I, you know the way i feel is if i have something to get off my chest if i have something that i need to share with you that i think is vital that is critical then i, I want to put it out there even if it makes the videos too long and anyway record 25 billion dollars into emerging market stocks in the past four weeks you can see the chart on the left hand side emerging market equity flows of course as always data coming from the epfr on the right hand side largest gold outflows over the past ever uh, in the past three weeks and just see that change leading up into 2020 and then as we move through the re remainder of this year it is just getting slaughtered right now this one right here 
here on the left hand side shows us the second largest inflows to tips ever this week so i don't know why exactly that this is happening at this time but in comparison to what we saw it's hard to tell in this chart here i believe earlier in 2020 or perhaps end of 2019 it looks like beginning of 2020 where there was a huge outflow now there's somewhat of an inflow taking place there on the right hand side 36 dollars of inflow for every 100 dollar of outflow since january 2020 and that's emerging market equities financials europe u.s value u.s small cap flows so there's just some information if you wanted to check it out but let me show you what's happening right here you can see once again as expected brexit deal is off the table oh no all right we're done with the brexit thing everybody drop it how many times does this thing have to go back on and off and on and off it's like a bad relationship my goodness get the deal done if the people want it done we should be getting it done and in a bit of insanity doordash boosts its ipo target now seeks to raise three billion dollars three billion dollars for this company here that they've said specifically we're not even sure if we can ever be profitable but nobody cares look at what happened with those that imitation meat company i can't remember the name right now it's escaping me but it's it went crazy you remember it was going up a hundred percent every week and then you looked at all these other companies that would ipo oh that's a bad company oh it's losing money every single month okay great let's just throw billions of dollars at it it's crazy that's what 2020 is about it is in many ways worse than 2000 but people ignore that and they deny it because they are over leveraged and that is never a good sign that's all for this video if you found that informative hit that thumbs up button when you do you are supporting me i want to thank you for that if you want to learn about e-commerce you can do that for free at the amazon gps.com if you want to know about the financial system top to bottom a to z all the details are in these two books check them out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook instead themoneygps.com and wait a second have you seen this video yet really good details really good data definitely check it out and i'll see you there